Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to uh, get a Kerbal over to Ike, and uh, do so in a reusable way. And I'm pondering about our science. We do have science to spend. And I guess the first thing to do would be to complete this tier, just for, for uh, completeness sake. But I'm looking at heavier rocketry. Uh, I don't think we've uh, technically plumbed all the possibilities as far as the rockets we've got, but they have upped the efficiency of the mainsail engine, and it might be a good thing to just go with that, since uh, it used to be that the mainsail engine had uh, just sort of roughly similar stats, a similar feel to an F1 engine, which is not something you would want to bring into space. Uh, now, though, the mainsail has stats that are roughly equivalent to, uh, let's say, a, a, a more efficient kerosene burning engine, something like a SpaceX engine, and that's not unreasonable to bring up to space with, so it could be our single stage to orbit portion. So yeah, I, I guess we'll go with that, and we'll be building bigger rockets, so alright. What have we got after that? We've got the rest of the NASA parts, and then we've also got the nuclear stuff, which is uh, highly efficient, though difficult to get into orbit sometimes. Anyway, but uh, that is our the state of our tech tree, so let's take it back to the VAB and see what we can do with it. And after a quick bit of uh, refining of my OV-5, I now have the OV-6, which is powered by a mainsail. Now, again, maybe this is not the best idea. Maybe I should stick to the skipper for things, but we'll see how this works out. And if it works out well, maybe we can launch heavier payloads uh, to perhaps more distant locations. For now, I'm just going to see how this works out and if it does. And by works out, I mean if we can bring this back down to a controlled landing at a specified location instead of just anywhere it happens to end up. So uh, we are going to be trying to bring this back to the KSC this time, and uh, as well as this. Now this... Hmm... Should be able to transfer to to our target, Ike. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any reason why I can't. It was uh, suited for the moon after all. So Ike should not be a problem. We'll see. If, it, if something goes wrong, we'll have to rescue the Kerbal. And, well, that's nothing new, is it? So, yep, we will go with that and let's see how this works. Let's take it out to the launch pad. Hmm... Seems a bit shaky on its legs, I have to say. Should have locked suspension, maybe. It's got clearance for the mainsail, though, so that's good. Let's get SAS on and uh, time warp to di full daylight here. Oh, it's Jeb. Well, alright, I'll send Jeb. I don't think I sent Jeb to the to the moon, so we'll, we'll let Jeb do this one. That's right, right? I want to make sure that I didn't send Jeb to the moon. Uh, that's Desric to the Greater Flats and Richmore. Fine, we'll send Jeb to Ike. And Jeb deserves at least one flag planting occasion. And, oh, well, we already got the Ike uh, exploration stuff, so that's fine. All right, so that's what we're going for. So, looks like we're ready to go. Throttle is up, SAS is on, and launch. Very good, gear up. Start off at a bit of a tilt there because of the landing gear not being perfectly balanced, but we can correct that very easily. Oh darn! I'm gonna have to have him wait in orbit while uh, while Duna approaches its uh, correct transfer point. I didn't time it properly. Oh well. 
In this case, they don't uh, use consumables, so we don't have to worry about that. No food, water, and oxygen being depleted. So we'll just have Jeb hang out. Okay, we are go for pitch program. I'm using 120 meters per second rather than any other measure. And I'm gonna do it very smoothly instead of uh, just immediately turning to whatever point. Okay, pretty much perfect gravity turn so far. Not gravity turn. Pitch program. Okay, we will hold at uh, 73 kilometers apoapsis. Okay, we're in space. Let's see if the OV-6 can make orbit. Whoa, big kick. Hold on. Let me just check how much fuel we have. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Okay. You know what? That that's not too far off. I'll I'll do another burn at Apoapsis. Let's yeah. Let let's just uh, wait till our new Apoapsis and then do a slight burn there. Okay, that's this module in orbit. So that is done. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, don't go spinning all out of control now. Scott, we've got enough fuel for uh, deorbiting, definitely. Okay, getting it settled down. Very good. And now let's uh, decouple the mission. All right. The mission is underway. Okay, still got some fuel left. That's good. Ah, that's perhaps a little bit closer than I was looking for. That will definitely make us hit the mountains or get even further away. And for reference, what is our... In the dark, it's tough to ask, actually say where we are. We're probably a little bit behind where we normally do it. Probably we normally do the burn around here. And this is our home continent. And there's the flame effects. Okay, not bad. I don't really want to slow in the horizontal direction. Uh, I should probably just take this, shouldn't I?
Eh, we'll get a little bit closer, but not much. Oh, don't flip over, don't flip over. Uh, okay. Alright. And parachutes. Right. Still not very SpaceX, but uh, we're, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Perhaps a bit too fast with the... I mean, uh, I think this might be too heavy for just 12 parachutes like this. We'll see. Mm, 8 is good. 8 meters per second, probably alright. Let's time up a bit, bring it to the ground. So we'll have to be much less than 8 meters per second, I think. Um, let's recover this part. Ah, it didn't give me the recover vessel dialog, so it didn't count that as a recovered part, I guess? We recovered it, we should have gotten points for it, right? Um, Alright, uh, let's recover this one too, recover. Okay, well this one gives us points, but it didn't uh, count the engine and all that. So, if the engine isn't connected to the probe part, it doesn't count it as uh, recovered? I guess not. Okay, so noted. Um, yeah, definitely need to slap more parachutes on there or reserve the fuel for slowing down. Uh, we still had a little bit of fuel left. I could have tried to uh, throttle it a little bit and uh, bring it down a little bit more softly. I'll have to remember to do that next time. Okay. So, uh, with that, our mission is in orbit, and we can time warp from here. No point going out there because it'll take too long, so let's uh, proceed with the time warp. Okay, so my handy protractor said that that's 45 degrees. It looks less than 45 degrees to my eyes, but that just shows you how deceptive the eyes can be. So let's go back out to uh, see how Jeb is doing. Okay, looking good. Let's plot for Duna. Okay, it looks like I can get about 8,880 kilometers away from out here. I guess that's good enough for now. Not not my usual kind of transfer and it looks like we've got uh, a bigger burn than I would have hoped it looks a little bit off from a home and transfer uh, you can see maybe about this angle that gap and well I mean uh, yes we're not at the ascending or descending node so that's a little bit of trouble but we've got zero inclination so can't really see how that would make too much of a difference. Okay, trans Duna injection. Okay, here we go. No RCS to fine tune things here, so. Let's just uh, take a look at what's going on. Oh, we're ending up further away here. Could be okay. Uh, ah. Alright, uh, 11,300 kilometers. I will accept that at this point. Should have action grouped them, but looks like I forgot that again. 
Also probably forgot the... Oh no, we've got uh, landing lights, so that's good. Alright. Out we go. On to... Uh, well, mid-course plane change, probably. Well, not plane change, but mid-course adjustments so that we can get closer to the Duna. Slash Ike, of course. Ike is a real target. Okay, that looks good. Duna periapsis uh, 6,000 almost. Maybe we can get a little bit higher. Okay, 21,000. That's safer. In three days. Mostly an inclination change, I think. Let's see where it is. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's do this as well as we can. A little bit too far. Well, we got 203, and if I... Okay, that's too much more, so let's go the other way. Oh, okay, we're crashing into it. That's fine. So, obviously we are air braking at Duna before moving on to Ike. So that's the plan. Now, why didn't I pack some more science? I, I probably didn't pack as much science as I should have. For Ike, at least, I should have gotten the seismometer and everything. I was so focused on uh, rebuilding the launch vehicle that I didn't really pay any attention to the lander. Okay, so here we are in Duna's sphere of influence. Bad inclination going in. Uh, we want that a little bit further out. Oh, darn, it doesn't let me. Okay, that looks good. Looks about in line with uh, Ike and also a periapsis of uh, 13,500. We'll, we'll, we'll refine that as we get closer. I'm going to do this one from out here in order to leverage the effects and uh, reduce how much it costs. And you can see the benefits of doing it from out here. Uh, we seem to already be a bit high, so I'm going to do a different sort of maneuver in order to adjust that. Alright, let's hold it there for now. Alright, so I'm going to check aero braking calculator to see exactly where I should aero brake, hopefully to get an apoapsis at around 2,900, let's say. Alright, so I'll be back with you for, with that. Okay, our braking calculator didn't like me for a little bit there, but uh, it uh, eventually decided to let me have a go at this. So it said around uh, 14 kilometers, though as you can see, turning around itself already changes my periapsis by a few hundred here and there, but... Uh, okay, maybe I should just get closer instead of trying to do really, really fine-tuned adjustments from out here. Okay, so it's like that. All right. Well, that should be pretty conservative. Maybe you should get in a little bit tighter than that. All right, let's go with this. It'll bring us... Uh, to a lower apoapsis than I want, but that might be a little bit safer. Okay. So with that, let us orient properly. I think it's okay to retract solar panels here.
Okay, here we go. About a minute and 42 seconds away from apoapsis. Uh, not apoapsis, periapsis. Hope that mountain doesn't get in our way. Not really any flame effects. I'm coming, coming in pretty gently, I suppose. And it's about to make orbit. And there's an orbit. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, I see something possible here, right now. Okay, well, we just need to boost up a little bit for that sort of thing. So noted. We're back on the way up out of uh, Duna's atmosphere. Arrow breaking was successful. Arrow capture. And our relative inclination to Ike is 2 degrees. We can probably say Oh no, that's worse. Okay, so we should start burning like now kind of thing. Right. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay, we should be able to maneuver in Duna's atmosphere well enough to do this. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Sort of a strange approach to Ike, but this is Jeb we're talking about. And so we're going to have a Ike periapsis of 32 kilometers, or slightly increasing now because we're still in the atmosphere of Duna. And uh, Duna periapsis that is currently declining, just about as much as the Ike periapsis is increasing. Need to transfer fuel now. These, I, I one thing I didn't uh, fix about this is uh, I didn't add fuel lines even though we have them unlocked now. So, manual transfer it is. So we'll call this our Ike landing fuel. There is also other fuel. There is our return journey fuel, very important. Before the Ike landing, that's all we're going to get. And then these other two drums will hold our fuel for return to Kerbin. Okay, I think we're all good. What what other signs do we have on this pod, if we have any? I don't think so. I had originally intended, this was of course a uh, pod to the moon, and we were just going to do uh, Science Junior and GUI experiments separately, so... That's why I didn't put much science on this. This is a boots on the ground kind of pod. Okay, here we go for Ike Orbit. And that should be Orbit. Oh, no, it made the camera change before we actually got in Orbit. OK, 
Okay, that's good. And now we will plot for the landing. That should give us reasonable clearance. Okay, descent orbit insertion complete. Now just for the descent. Let's see, where should I pick? We could come down here. Looks like the sort of place that they'd be interested in, this dark patch. Or we could land a little bit further on. I don't see too much of a distinction. We need some biomes on Ike, otherwise there's really no difference. I'll just start uh, the descent burn now. Let's get the gear down. And where we land, we land. Uh, it's a bit of a rough patch here though. Somewhere in the middle of that would be good. Where is that? Uh, yeah, somewhere in the middle of here. Alright, coming in for a landing. Below 100 meters per second. Don't know exactly what real altitude we're at. But should be fine. Gotta go to surface. For some reason uh, Ike was not switching it in a timely fashion. Okay, there we go, on the surface. I was a little bit uh, disoriented for a bit there. Need to get ladders. Uh, do, do we have ladders? No, we don't. Need to get ladders at some point. I think uh, ice gravity is sufficiently low though, so that we can have Jeb do his thing. And uh, I'll probably leave any further stuff for uh, Jeb getting, getting down on his feet like a pro. Anyway, uh... Getting Jeb back will probably be a separate episode. This one has probably run quite long already. So, uh, Jeb. Uh, come up. Over here. Uh. Alright, Jeb. Now, plant the flag. Okay. Jeb on Ike. Today's date. Okay. We should colonize this place. Colonize, come on. Which is probably what Jeb thinks about every planet or celestial body he lands on. Take surface sample. Recovery will be 240 science. EVA report is 64 science. He sees something zip past. Okay, not too surprising if you've read it before. I wonder what the backstory on that one is. We did not leave uh, Orbiter sort of module up there, so that's not what's zipping past. Okay, he's in. Let's do the crew report. Okay, keep data. And with that, I will say that we have successfully landed on Ike. We didn't really successfully recover our launch vehicle, though, which was a big part of the mission. And so I sort of regret that. But I just need more, a little more practice. At least we didn't land in the water this time. Um, 
definitely need to use the engine on touchdown to relieve some of the pressure on the parachutes and slow us down. And perhaps then it'll work out properly. Uh, we definitely had enough fuel. We got into orbit uh, as expected and we had enough fuel to get back down. Uh, plenty in fact to uh, even control the landing quite a bit. So that's all good signs for the future. And, uh, and yeah, we got Jeb on Ike, which was the main mission that we were attempting. So this has been successful. Now it's just a matter of bringing him back. And that'll be, that'll be a thing for the next episode. And we'll also do something else in the next episode. I haven't decided what, but I don't, th it won't be just bringing Jeb back. It'll have to be something else as well. So I uh, look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please uh, click the thumbs up uh, to indicate that you liked this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.